Hi, and welcome to all our viewers and all of our followers. My name is Stephanie Mata. I'm an associate attorney here at the law offices of Beltran Brito Casimir. I'm Gil Brito, managing partner of Beltran Brito Casimir LLP. Today we're going to be talking about interviews in extraordinary ability cases, so individuals who have applied for residency in the United States based on their extraordinary ability. Typically, these cases did not have interviews, okay? So what we're seeing now is we're seeing a high volume of these cases have interviews. It's not something bad, it's not unusual, it's the new policy by USCIS, it's now something that is required by law. Every person that is applying for a green card basically is going to have to go to, to an interview. That's going to be on talent. That's going to be based on a company petitioning for you. That's going to be on a family-based petition. That could be a married to USC. That could be every case. And that they've really, really limited which cases are not going to have interviews. Okay. Uh, so since uh, you know our, our our law firm specializes in a lot of talent and extraordinary ability petitions, uh, we, we've started to see quite frequently on a weekly basis our clients have interviews. Okay, um, And I think it's important to kind of be prepared, well prepared for the interview. Uh, we always say we want to prepare for the worst uh, and just hope for the best, right? Uh, generally speaking, we've been extremely successful at these interviews and our clients have, have had a very easy time at the interviews. and. The interviews uh, are, are actually something different than what people think they are. People think it's like, I got I, there's a gotcha moment uh, in that interview. There's really no gotcha. There's no secrets. There's no hiding the ball. They're not, all, all they're doing is they're trying to close out your file. They're verifying the information. They want to know who this individual is. Uh, are, do you actually, you know, uh, is there anything that bars you from having a green card? Uh, and, and, and just to go ahead and process it and and authorize it and approve the green card for this individual. So let's talk, let's go ahead, Stephanie, and start talking about a little bit about that process. So, so uh, how, how does it work? We go ahead, I, I have my, my, I get my appointment notice from U.S. Immigration, I have my appointment notice, and now uh, I've decided to, uh, you know, uh, go ahead and go to my interview. Let's talk about that a little bit. So essentially you're going to arrive. This is going to be at a local office of immigration. You're going to arrive. It's going to be a waiting area. You're going to arrive with your whole family unit. So every person that is applying with you, all your family members, spouse, children under 21, will be attending this interview with you. You're going to go ahead and show up to the waiting room in the USCIS local office. Mm -hmm. Once you're there, once you're inside with the officer, you're going to go ahead and be sworn in. You'll be sworn in, tell the truth, nothing but the truth. And then they're going to ask you for all of these biographical documents. So what you have to take with you. First, we always recommend take the interview notice with you. The interview notice has a huge list of documents that you have to take with you, some of which don't apply, which is what we're going to cover today. But take this notice with you. That way you have this point of reference. The other thing is, for all of your family members, bring the civil documents. So you're going to bring birth certificates copy of marriage certificates. You want to establish each relationship of each person do we, that's do, do, I mean, do we need originals? Should we take originals to that interview? I do recommend taking originals, though it's not necessary. You can always take your originals because they're not going to keep them. So I would take the originals. That's my best bet, unless you do not have them. It's, it's, I, I think it's. we should recommend that, really. Yeah. And, and when, when it's available, uh, sometimes originals are not available. Maybe it's a certified copy. If we have a certified copy. Let's go ahead and take it that day. Really. What is this interview about? It's about verifying information, and they want to verify that you are actually the person you say you are. That's going to be with civil documents, like like a mer like a marriage certificate, like a birth certificate. So I do recommend that we have the originals that date. Um, let's keep going. The other thing is, in order to verify identification, your forms of identification, usually passport, and I also like to suggest a driver's license if you have it. I think right? so. I think so as well. And. Uh, only take the driver's license though if it's for example a husband and a wife if both driver's licenses have the same address right. so even though this is not a marriage-based interview and we'll talk about that it's not a spousal interview it is it is an extraordinary ability under the employment category interview and that's that's the the line of questioning you're going to receive we don't want to provide different addresses for two individuals in the same application. I just think it looks weird and it's going to go ahead and spark a whole line of thinking for that for that officer that that is not necessary. Absolutely. So other documents that we also recommend is you want to be able to prove that since you entered to the United States to this moment you have been with your status. So any approvals of prior visas that you've had, copies of your old visas, if you've had an employment authorization document in the past, bring that with you. So you're going to really show this line of your staff. We see it frequently um, with students particularly. 
you've had I-20s, you've been in the U.S. for five years as a student, you jumped over to a non-immigrant visa, you're now applying for a green card, maybe you've been in the U.S. for eight years. You don't have copies of all those I-20s. You don't have copies of that old visa that was in your passport. Try to take it. Try to find it. Maybe go to the school, get another copy of it. We want to always be able to demonstrate that you had lawful status in the U.S. from your initial entry all the way up to applying for the green card. Okay. Another question we frequently get, Gil, is whether or not I have to take the original copy of my case from the first step of the process, mm -hmm. essentially. Sure. While you don't need to take the copy, the assumption is the officer is going to have it. What we have found in our experience is that sometimes the case is not arriving to the officers, not arriving they're not, to the They're not office. connecting the file. So you have the I-140 petition, which is the Extraordinary Ability Petition. It's usually a mammoth file. You know, it's over a thousand pages. It's a big file. That gets into a different office, maybe. Uh, maybe it wasn't concurrently filed. Uh, maybe the green card application is not going to find its way with that file. So that day of the interview, even though you don't have to take the huge file with you, I do recommend if you have evidence of what you've been working on in the last six months to a year, if you have some new press, if you have some new work contracts, if you have a tax return, if you've been in the U.S. during that time, not, not as a tourist and you had the ability to work, let's go ahead and demonstrate that you were actually uh, working in your field in that time. Um, uh, just interject there where a very common question I guess, like, Gil, you know, I'm an actor. Uh, you know, at, at, I don't get acting jobs every single week. Sometimes I'm working at, as a waiter in a, in a restaurant, but I'm also uh, working on a lot of uh, acting projects. Should I should I really emphasize that I'm working as a waiter or not? I mean, you don't have you don't have to lie at the interview. You can tell them the truth. Like, listen, I might have a side job, but my principal job in the U.S. is to continue working as an artist. My principal job in the U.S. Uh, is, you know, my intention to work in the future is to continue working as an artist. So I think it's very important that that idea is portrayed at, at, at an interview and that your intention continues to be working as an actor in the U.S., working as an artist in the U.S., working as what, whatever, whatever you were called in that extraordinary ability petition, whatever your profession is, uh, you know, whatever was the basis for the green card, you need to have an intention. Now, Stephanie, do you have to have a future work offer? Do you have to have a current work offer to still have a successful green card application for an extraordinary ability applicant? Right. So according to the law, technically, you do not have to have a concrete future job offer in the United States. However, you do have to be able to demonstrate that you have an intention to continue working in your field. And truly the best way to be able to show that is letters from individuals who work in your field that say we have an interest in, with working in this with this individual or perhaps a future project that may not be concrete but we're working on this future film I mean, project. You have to take that to the interview though. You I think that that's the question. I mean, is you know the law doesn't require it. If the law doesn't require it, why am I required to provide this at the interview? So my preparation for clients and for the interviews has basically been the law doesn't require it. If they ask for it, kindly, nicely tell them it's something I could obtain. My attorney will go ahead and provide it to you. We'll go ahead and respond to any further requests from USCIS. Uh, that interview is not the end all be all. After that interview, they could request a few items. If they request a few items, we'll handle it. You know, we'll respond to it. We're going to respond in a very, very strong fashion, uh, demonstrating exactly what the immigration officer wanted, requested, but at the same time, being quite aggressive with legal arguments and saying, if something's not required by law, it is not required by law. It is not on this. It, it is not on this on this interview checklist that you received in the mail. And and I still believe that we need to comply with absolutely everything that they're requesting and is on this list. But at the same time, in in, in a very nice, respectful, diplomatic fashion, hey. That's not that's not necessary, uh, and 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 it, it it is not a requirement for an extraordinary ability applicant applying for his green card. And speaking of which, for those things that are really not required by law, mm -hmm. let's speak about the affidavit of support. Okay, so you know, uh, typically for green card cases, family-based cases, what you see is this thing called the affidavit of support. This is where somebody is becoming financially responsible for another individual in the United States. They are signing basically a 10-year contract with the U.S. government that I am now financially responsible for you and for all your financial obligations, medical obligations, bills, this type of thing in the U.S. Is this a requirement for extraordinary ability cases? It is not a requirement for extraordinary ability cases, okay? Uh, is uh, you'll, you'll have a USCIS officer on occasion request one, 
uh, you kindly tell them this is not a, my attorney told me this is not a requirement uh, in the law okay uh, and but uh, we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and respond uh, after the interview with any requests that they would make right an important point which you've been touching upon is this is not the end. So at this interview, what can happen? A couple of things. Either you're essentially told you're approved and your green card's gonna arrive in the mail, or this can be a case where the immigration officer is gonna want to request things. This is not something to be nervous about. This is, they're gonna give us an opportunity to respond in writing of any sort of request that they may want, of any sort of document they may want, yeah. and we have an opportunity to respond, right? So, um, you know, what what I feel is that is the idea of what this people think this interview is actually is and it's it's just a process you know they're just trying to close out the file they're 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 going and they're checking off the checklist you know they're verifying the documentation they're going to ask you a lot of questions from the forms okay from those forms that you filled out and that you reviewed and that you signed uh, and they're going to ask you questions from those forms and they're they're going to go through the information they want to make sure that you're actually the person that's there that day. Okay, and that everything that you put in that application is true and correct and accurate. Okay, right. uh, unless there's issues, I think like criminal issues, you have you have a little bit of a checkered history there with with, with criminal with arrest. Um, doesn't preclude you necessarily from a green card. Uh, you could still possibly obtain a green card. Obviously, you need to have a consultation with with an immigration attorney regarding that. Um, but at the same time, you need to provide the proper documentation if you have an arrest. Uh, you, you need to provide uh, if you've been divorced twice uh, you need to provide the divorce decrees uh, if you, you know if you're married and, and your spouse is there they might they might ask you some spousal questions and I call it a mini spousal interview even though this is based on employment and extraordinary ability they still have the discretion to ask you some questions about your marriage I mean right an example and, being if you're married two weeks or you know very little amount of time before you submit this application it, this may turn into sort of a mini marriage yeah. interview and you have to be ready to be able to answer those and questions. it doesn't mean it's not a real marriage right. and it, it, it is a real marriage and and, and you need to you just need to document things uh, a, a little bit more like so i'll recommend even though it's not a marriage interview i'll recommend to to a couple that listen take a lease agreement take a bank account Take insurance documents, demonstrate, you know, take some photos, demonstrate that you have a life together. If you have a tax return that's already been filed with both your names, it's a joint, you know, joint, uh, uh, you know, jointly filed uh, tax return, take it with you that day. Uh, it's going to go ahead and make you feel more at ease uh, that you have that with you that day, even though it's not something that they may, that they have, you know, that you have to give or that they may request, but you feel comfortable that you have it. If you want to provide it to them, if they're asking you for it specifically, feel free to give it to them. And Gil, to your point that if you have some sort of criminal history, some sort of checkered history, perhaps you've had issues with status in the United States, it is rec recommended that you can possibly bring an attorney to this interview to sort of verify those questions. The attorney, yeah. important, cannot answer questions on your behalf. Yes. However, the attorney can sort of make sure that the officer is following the guideline and making sure that he's answering or he or she is answering the questions that they need to be answering I mean, and the, not going yeah, elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, the, the attorney is there really in case something goes wrong. Okay. Uh, the attorney's job is not to, uh, you know, answer questions about your life. The attorney, uh, you, 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 you might, it, you might get an overly aggressive officer, and they'll just tell the attorney, "Hey, be quiet," uh, and 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 you can't. And it's like I've been there, I've done that. Okay. Uh, and it's it, it's you know, it just kind of depends. You might get an office. It's very nice, and basically, you almost take over the interview, and you have to like provide all the evidence that they're asking for and do everything. It just kind of kind of depends on the officer and their particular style. Um, what I have seen. And I'm going to say 90% of our clients have gone to these interviews without an attorney because none is necessary. And we prepare you thoroughly prior to that. Uh, if they feel that they really need us there, we will be there. Uh, if there is an issue like a criminal issue or a, like you like you mentioned, let's say the checkered past, I do recommend that the attorney is there. Uh, not the, at, at, at the very least as a third party in that room to make sure that things flow properly. And you know, there's no issues with the, with the uh, applicant. Okay. Another thing that could be recommended, if you don't feel confident in your English and you don't feel strong in your English, you do have the opportunity to bring an interpreter with sure. you, sure. and the interpreter can enter with you. And um, in, you may encounter an officer that says, "Don't worry, I speak French as well. The interpreter is not needed." But you can, and you have the option to be able to take that. Yeah, interpreter. that's one of the things on the list. That, that, that that's the first thing on the list, actually. Do you do you need an inter interpreter? If you do, take one that day. Uh, if you want your attorney to be there, your attorney may be there. Uh, bring these civil documents documents 
that day with you. Just to recap, passport, birth certificate, marriage certificate, divorce decrees, uh, even, even a death certificate on some occasions is necessary as well as a civil document. I prefer, again, take originals if they're available or certified copies that day. Um, and generally, and one, one just kind of to close a little bit. So, so you say you have extraordinary ability in music, acting, you know, business, whatever, whatever the basis was for your EB-11, your, your green card petition you should be prepared to talk about your field you should be prepared to talk about your past history you should be prepared to talk about what do you want to do in the future in the u.s even if you're not working today as an actor a musician a business professional a marketing guru whatever you could think of, a college professor you don't have that job at university yet you know uh, an amazing designer you don't have that job yet but you could talk about what your intention is uh, and potentially I have some things down the pipe I have some I have a, a possible project I'm working on I'm working on my own project freelance right now I'm doing my own thing right now be prepared to potentially talk about those things and I, I, I would I would try to restrict that to your field of endeavor even though you might be in all these other baskets and doing a lot of interesting things let's try to focus on your extraordinary ability field okay? absolutely okay i don't believe we have any other questions from our viewers it was a pleasure being with you today stay tuned because next we're going to be uh, in the future we're going to be able to discuss family-based interviews which is a whole different animal very complex and a lot more um, documentation really than what we have now so stay tuned for that, and you can follow us on our on our social media platforms at Beltran Brito LLP. Thank you. Thank you.